Okay, so let's get started with database questions. So I'm going to start the practice exam. And the first question here asks, a company has deployed several relational databases on Amazon RDS. Every month, the database software vendor releases new security patches that need to be applied to the database. What is the most efficient way to apply the security patches? So again, note that this is another kind of short scenario based question, which is starting to become more common in the cloud practitioner exam. And note that when you get these questions, you'll, you'll get a few variables that you've got to think about and make definite note of here. So here it's saying, what is the most efficient way? Sometimes it will say, what is the lowest cost option? Um, so you've got to make sure that you're answering based on exactly what they're looking for here. So in this case, the company's got relational databases on RDS and they're trying to work out how do they patch that database on a monthly basis. So let's have a look through these options. So firstly, we've got connect to each database instance on a monthly basis and download and apply the necessary security patches from the vendor. Well, that sounds to me like something you would do if you were managing your own database on an EC2 instance. But RDS, as you know, is a managed service. So as a managed service, I would not expect to have to actually go and sort of download them and install them myself manually. So let's look at the next option. Enable automatic patching for the instances using the RDS console. Well, RDS is a managed service and it does do patching for you. And you can define things like maintenance windows to make sure that, you know, if it is something that's going to cause the database to go offline for a while, that it doesn't affect you um, during, you know, a busy period. So I like that. I think that looks like a good option and I'm going to select that one. So let's check the last two. In AWS config, configure a rule for the instances and the required patch level. So config keeps a database of the configuration of your services, but it's not one that you can use specifically for patch management. So it's more about sort of configuring a database where you can record data, monitor, you know, changes in the configuration state of your resources and also alert on them, but it's not about patching. Use systems manager to automate database patching according to a schedule. Now you can use systems manager to manage patches for EC2 instances. That's a really good solution. But this is RDS, uh, not EC2. So even though RDS runs on EC2, it's a managed service. So Amazon should be taking care of the patching and you don't, you're not able to do that with Systems Manager. So I like option two here. So that all looks good. And let's just head over to a quick slide just to get some more background. So RDS is a managed service, as I mentioned, and maintenance can include stuff like updating the DB instances underlying hardware and operating system, database engine version updates and instance and instance OS and database patching. So there's several things happening there and that all is taken care of by AWS. And a maintenance window is used for any updates that are likely to take your database offline for a short period. Back on the question, if you scroll down to the explanation as well, you'll see there's a bit more data here and it shows you a sort of um, a bit of a screenshot here from the RDS management console uh, about where you can actually configure your maintenance periods and your patching. So let's move on to the next question. Which of the below AWS services supports automated backups as a default configuration? Well, you know what section you're in and we've pretty much just answered that. So that should be a really good, uh, really easy answer. Um, but as always, let's look at the other ones. So Amazon S3 is obviously an object based storage system. So, you know, that doesn't support any kind of automated backups, um, any kind of backups for the, you know, the underlying hardware and so on that runs this and the software that runs S3 is completely outside of um, your, your view, you'll never actually see that uh, or control it. It's all AWS. What about Amazon EC2? Well, no, that doesn't actually support automated backups. Um, you can use Systems Manager to automate your backups, but that's not EC2, that's a separate service. And the same for EBS, you know, and it's a volume storage system. So it's not going to actually need patching. Only the underlying infrastructure that runs it must be patched, and that's AWS's responsibility. So that looks good. Let's just go and have a look at the answer here. And yes, RDS automated backups allow point in time recovery to any point within the retention period down to a second. So you can do a couple of different types of backups with RDS. You've got the point in time and you've also got the snapshots as well. So that was a pretty easy one. Let's move on. 
which service can be used to create sophisticated interactive graph applications? So if you watch my kind of intro video at the beginning of the section, hopefully you'll know how to answer this one. So remember that a graph application or a graph database is a type of database that stores relationships between uh, things like people. So you might have people in there and you can draw sort of connections between them. How do they interact? Who knows who? That kind of thing. So Amazon Neptune is the one I'm going to go with there. But let's look at these others. So Redshift is a relational database. It's a warehouse, so it's a data warehouse. So what you'd normally do with Redshift is take data from something like a transactional database such as Amazon RDS. So one that you actually would have your orders placed in, for instance, if you're an e-commerce website. You would take that data, put it into Redshift, and then you run analytics on it. So it's a good way of you know, putting lots of data on there and running queries that might be very compute intensive. So X-Ray is used for debugging applications. It's a tracing service. It's got nothing to do with graph applications. And Amazon Athena is a service you can use for running SQL queries on data. So it's got to be Neptune in this case. I'm going to click on check. So that is the answer. And let's just go back to the slides. So remember, just to remind you, you know, this is an example of a graph database like Amazon Neptune, where you have those kind of relationships of who is friends with who. So that's the type of database. Now you don't need to know any more detail than that for the exam. They just like to test, do you know what the service is and what it's used for?